Right, I've dismantled the prototype, this one here, and the breadboard, and taken out all the bits and pieces, and I've now constructed this here, and more to the point, written the code for it as well. And just using this um, breadboard now, just for the, uh, the LED light, which shows when you've pressed or touched the little pad to say, no noise this time. And also this, these two wires here on this bar um, replicate the door opening read switch controlled by the magnet. So I can demonstrate that now. If I, if I pull one of these out so the door's open, you get the sound when you shut it. And if you take it out and you leave it out, now downstairs we're going to have it for about 30 seconds before it bleeps. We did previously have it for 10 seconds and quite frankly it drove my wife mad. Why? Well, when you're coming back from a supermarket and you're filling your fridge with stuff, 10 seconds is no time at all. It's fine for grabbing the milk and maybe a pot of yogurt, but not for restocking your fridge. So 10 seconds was definitely not long enough. So I've um, changed that downstairs to 30 seconds. And there it just went um, and learned my lesson from that to have it every 30 seconds. Because 30 seconds is actually quite a long time when you are stocking your fridge up. You'll certainly be able to do it within a couple of minutes. So this beeps once for every 30 second delay. So that's beeped once. Next time it's going to beep twice. So beep, beep. And after another 30 seconds, three times, beep, beep, beep. Now, if it gets to five beeps, it then just beeps continuously um, to say, look, now there's the twice, to say, look, something's wrong. Um, the door's still open after effectively five minutes, is that? Let's have a look. We've got 30 seconds times off, two and a half minutes. So two and a half minutes is quite a long time. So if we, um, so imagine now we've, the door's open, it's beeped at us a couple of times, and three times now to say, look, the door's still open. So we shut it, and we get that little confirmation sound. Now, as I said, Benny has come to recognize that sound. So now we can touch this, which is gonna be connected to some sort of touch sensor on that burglar alarm container that's affected by the magnet right next to the door. So I touch that. The light goes on to show me, and I'm gonna have an LED somewhere on that little thing to show that the next opening is gonna be silent. So we open the door, no noise, and we can shut the door, no noise. And the light then goes off, it resets itself. However, you still, of course, whether it's silent or not, so we take it out, even though you've opened the door silently, should you accidentally or otherwise leave the door open, you most certainly still want to be reminded of it. So the bit that checks um, every 30 seconds whether or not you've left the door open will still work. So I'm hoping that in a few seconds time we'll still end up with a bleep here, just to remind us the door is in fact open as shown by this wire here. There it is, and then we can shut the door. No door shut sound though, brilliant. Light goes off, the end. Now this uses um, a couple of little coding techniques that I definitely want to show you when I've built it into the box. So I guess that's the next thing. I followed, of course, my own advice, tried each thing out separately, created sketches for each, and then plugged them all in together. So let's see how that goes next. Right, let's have a look at the code. Um, oh, there it goes bleeping away. Um, oh, in fact, that was four bleeps, wasn't it? I think we've got another 30 seconds and it will go into the continual alarm. So that'll be good to show. Um, now, I thought I'd better talk through the code, actually, um, before I start putting this away into um, boxes and things, because it's going to be very difficult to show it other than the actual effect. So let's have a look at some of the code. Um, right. I'm not going to go through every single line here. I'm just going to point out interesting bits for you, because... Right, that was the five, five bleeps. After that, it will be on to continuous bleep mode, I believe, anyway. Um, so this is now powered independently, not through the USB port anymore. Now you see I've got it into the, uh, the nine volt supply here via this independent supply, as in fact, it will be running downstairs like that. Um, right, I'm gonna whip through this because the reason I say I'm not gonna go through every single bit of it, because there are probably three sketches Oh, there we go, that's the alarm. So the, the door's now been open for two and a half minutes, and that's too long. So it's just gonna, it's gonna do this noise now. So irritating, isn't it? Which is a good thing, uh, until you actually shut the door again. So let's shut the door. Right, 
Now in real life, of course, if you were to keep the real the door open for longer than two and a half minutes because you, you were spending forever choosing your dinner or something, um, all you have to do is shut the door and reopen it and it will restart the timer, of course. That's what we used to do when it was at 10 seconds. Um, right. Um, yeah, there are three sketches now that you can look at, each with an independent piece of this code plugged in together. So I'm just going to whiz through this um, because, well, unless you're creating this exact uh, project, um, it's not that interesting. Right, first of all, we're using this tone library, which I'll include as a link. Um, the great thing about this tone library, it's non-blocking. Um, it does say that a simpler form of this tone library is the one that's included in the Arduino. Um, sketches, but this is a separate one and it's non blocking and it's very easy to use. We're using the capacitive sensor that we mentioned uh, in the previous sketch that just, just works really, it's really simple. So we define our object note player, I've called it, to create the tones. Um, the no noise boolean that's the thing that's determined by this touch pad here. That's setting a flag to say no noise, as you can see it's set now. And then we've got counters and things, um, LED pins, which I'm just happen to be using pin 8. Um, this now volatile bool door is open. Now that should immediately tell you that there's an interrupt in use here, and there is. And we'll have a look at that. Let's scroll down to the interrupt right away, which is down the bottom. There it is. So the interrupt service routine, all that does is say, has the door been closed? And if it has, set the door is open boolean to false. And that's all it does and it gets out. Now there's a couple of little bits around it to say, look, if I've been in here within the last 50 milliseconds, just don't do anything. Why? Because we got switch bounce and even a read relay controlled by a magnet is going to bounce. Just in case you're not absolutely sure what this means, imagine these two bits I'm going to show you here. Imagine these are the bits of the switch and they're open like this. When you shut a switch, you think of it as just sort of shutting like that and opening and shutting. But what happens in extreme slow motion, if you were looking at it in microseconds now, what actually happens is the switch arm internal to the switch comes down bounces up, comes down, bounces up, comes down. Now that can happen two, three, four times in an extremely short period of time. Not short enough though for that um, interrupt routine not to detect that. So it go shut, shut, shut three times. And we don't need that. So in any interrupt that's looking at high low, high low change states from a switch of any kind, always put some kind of delay. Here I've got a fixed delay of 50. Now you will see lots and lots of um, switch bounce routines, which frankly I just find overly complex. If you just wait for 50 milliseconds, that's almost entirely correct. If you've got access to an oscilloscope, you can see that happening as well, the switch bounce. So remember, a switch isn't just like that, it bounces until it settles. So that's all that um, bit around and about it does. And it, so it sets the door is open to false because if we go back now to the code itself, you'll see, look, this is the interrupt here. And I'm saying um, only look at the low state, that is when the switch has been closed, which is caused by the door of the fridge shutting because the magnet then activates the read switch. Right, we've um, moved on a little bit. So let's go back to where we were. Um, right, we were talking about the volatile bull. Every Every variable that you declare inside or use inside an interrupt routine must be declared as volatile. What does that mean? It means basically that the compiler or the runtime library says, oh, I know where this, this um, variable is, I'll just go and read it, without realizing that the interrupt routine has actually changed the underlying memory value, so rather than the cached value or something. So it needs to actually go and reread that Boolean state before it tells you what it is. That's what volatile means. So it's, I suppose in some ways you could say it's marginally inefficient, but not for an interrupt. Okay, then there's some timing things and pin assignments. Um, this is uh, worthy of note, I think. This is my debugging serial print routine. Now, as you know, the serial print 
can print all sorts of things strings integers longs you name it it can print it so if you were to write um a subroutine or a method that does it for you as i've done it in here how do you know what the type of um, data it is that you're sending to it and basically your routine wouldn't know so you'd have to write many many overloaded routines but here by creating a template you're saying type of t then in your debug print statement you can say i've got a type of t and i'm passing in this variable called print me so your serial.print understands what that is because it's already been worked out for it up here just have a play about with that and you might want to just read up about templates but it allows you to as it says here it's a generic method it doesn't really care about the type of data that you're passing into it integer long string doesn't matter it works it out at runtime and sorts out this process here okay so we have a setup here we're setting the calibration every it says 10 seconds there but actually it's every one second if you notice that's a mis misalignment of my code and comment i'll correct that before i post it um, the door input pin is a input pull up so it means that on on here when this is take at the moment they're grounded right this is connected one of these is connected to ground and so the pin is connected to ground when i take it out it's no longer connected to ground any pin that is not connected to ground will be floating unless you connect that pin via a 10k resistor or something to plus 5 volts but here you don't have to it's done for you by the internal mechanisms of the arduino so it's connected via an internal resistor to the plus 5 volts that pulls it up for you saves your resistor saves you a bit of soldering etc okay so we're just having a few debug messages here and then we go into the main loop and basically nothing happens until we read that the dual relay pin has gone high so until it goes high which it is now nothing happens now when it does go high we attach this interrupt routine that we just looked at to say tell me when the door is shut again because that can happen at any time when we could be in the middle of doing all sorts of things we need to know instantly so that's what that's doing and we're saying while the door is open do the tone which is non-blocking so it's going to continue running around here in a loop a loop within a loop if you like saying have i finished playing a tone go and play the next tone okay so that's that little sound you hear about five tones there i think and the one going back down um bit of timing bit of bleeping not a lot i mean it's it's not particularly complex this um bit of mainly it's timing oh yes now when the door is shut we detach the interrupt handle because we don't need to know again if it goes low because logically it wouldn't make sense having gone low it's it's going to stay low and remember the top of the loop is only interested when things go high okay so until the fridge door is open we're not interested in anything else so we detach the interrupt handler stop things happening here um, turn that led off if it's on so if it was on as soon as we close the door again it's off and here just to save a bit of uh, processing time if it's no noise that is we haven't already touched this pin if we so we're not in a no noise state go and read this capacitive sensor which is connected to this line and if the signal is above 200 remember on our demo we said even 100 will work but let's make it super super safe and say 200 we just set this flag to true no noise true and the led pin goes high so it lights up that led now the no noise true all that does is when we're playing the open and closed door tones we're going if it's not no noise play the tune otherwise it just skips that bit and doesn't play anything okay so it's all dealt with behind the scenes um i've got a stop playing thing here right that's it i mean i'm not going to explain any more about this because you can take this as it is play about with it set it up on a little board like this if you want just to emulate the read relay and that's it right i'm going to actually wire this in downstairs get it all working i'll film 10 seconds of that 
and that'll be the end of the project. Right, so here it is installed into the original box. Um, not very pretty, I'm afraid, but well, I guess when I built this six, seven years ago, that's all I had. Um, yeah, in fact, that switch on the front on and off was the attempt I made at switching the door sounds off then using that pick chip, but it didn't work. That's not actually wired up now, so I don't need it. Um, now, the um, thing on the door, look, that really is a burglar alarm sensor. I thought it was. Um, and this is the touch sensor. Um, so that's going to be connected to something. There's the little LED in there. So, um, in fact, it works as it is. So let's try it out, shall we? All right, that was the uh, bleep alarm that said I'm running. So if we um, open the door now of the fridge, there's the sound and the sound again. So if I now touch this sensor, it's got to be um, connected to some sort of, well, something up at the top here. So the light's on, silence. Poor little Benny, you'll never know that we've opened the fridge. So that's it, well I'm going to put all this on. That um, LED actually goes through a hole in the uh, the cover of this. Here it is, with a little um, cut out for the LED. Don't think my camera wants to focus. Anyway, so that's going to go on there, the LED will poke through. The little sensor thing up at the top here, so you won't actually see it, that'll be on there. You just reach up, touch something, the light will come on, and bother your uncle. Alright, let's get it connected. Right, final test, here we are. That works, touch the top here, light comes on, silent opening, silent closing. So that really is the end of the project. So I hope you enjoyed watching that. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Please leave comments down below, subscribe, share and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.